Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing a review on the Ronco Showtime rotisserie machine and a demo. Okay, so first of all, I got this machine. Well, this is my second one. The original one I got was from a totally different brand, but this was a wedding present still. Um, the first one was stolen and then Bed Bath & Beyond replaced it. And then the one they replaced it with... Um, didn't work as well. It was a totally different brand and Bed Bath & Beyond suggested the Ronco rotisserie machine which they said was much better and a better quality and even cost more than the first one. Okay, I'll put a link down below for the, to the first one that I got for my wedding. Um, so as far as the machine itself, it is very sturdy. I love the way it's built. Actually very lightweight and easy to put together and super easy to clean. So those are probably my main positive things about this um, machine. My only issue is, is that it does not have a turn dial for temperatures. So you cook by weight and not by the set temperature. So if you want to cook something with a certain temperature, you can't do that. So you'll be cooking by weight. It does come with a... Um, guidebook um, to show you how to cook certain meats and how long to cook them for to get them correctly okay so those are my main positive things and pretty much just one negative but I'm gonna start off with the recipe for the chicken that I'm making in this machine so I started off with one tablespoon garlic powder a half a tablespoon of paprika powder one tablespoon onion powder a half a tablespoon of coarse ground black pepper one tablespoon parsley, a half tablespoon oregano, and one and a half tablespoons of coarse ground kosher, kosher salt. Kosher salt, okay? So you want to mix that around. You can definitely do your own spices, but this is for a very basic rotisserie um, chicken that I'm making. Um, usually I make a paste out of other ingredients. You know, I do modify recipes before I post them here because some things I just like to keep to myself, which I think most cooks like to keep certain things to themselves. Okay, but this chicken still came out tasting really, really great. And um, yeah, so as you guys can see, I cleaned my chicken and I lift up the skin and I put about a tablespoons worth of the uh, seasoning under the skin and I massage it in and I sprinkle in about a teaspoon inside of the chicken and you want to rub it in there um, all the way around okay now I'll turn the chicken over and I'm just gonna go ahead and put seasoning under the skin um, by the thigh area of the chicken and this is about a teaspoon I put on each side and I massage it in as well you know seasoning under the skin will definitely give you a more flavorful chicken especially if you're doing like a baked chicken or a rotisserie chicken or a turkey so I like to put my seasoning under the skin and I also season on the outside of the skin even though I don't eat the outside of the skin but um yeah so we're just gonna rub it all over And you can always modify the spices, add your own things that you like to make it taste the way you want it to taste, okay? Cooking should be fun and creative and um, you need to enjoy it and have fun with it. Don't be scared of cooking. It's, it's really not that hard. All right, so this is the string that we're going to use. What I do first is tie it together to make a loop or almost like a hair tie type thing um, or a circle. And I put it around the wings first and make an X and you bring it up to the back and you flip the chicken over and then you tie it around the drumsticks, the top part of the drumstick. Well, not tie it, but loop it around. So this way your chicken stays together in the rotisserie machine. So it's not like flopping all over the place. I do cut the tips off of the chicken wings. I don't like that being in there um, that's just a personal preference but you don't have to do it if you're not you know in the mood to do that so I just just do cut the tips off so here I'm just gonna speed up doing the second chicken because this machine can hold up to two chickens and a small turkey so maybe about a good 10 pound turkey can fit in there um, comfortably I haven't tried a turkey yet. I'll see what happens for Thanksgiving or maybe I can make like a pre-Thanksgiving turkey breast or something and see if it can handle it. 
but so far two chickens it can handle no problem when I filmed this this was my first time actually using it but um, I filmed this a while ago but since then I've used it a couple more times and I must say I do love it even though it doesn't have the turn dial for the temperature settings I've gotten used to it and I do really you know love the machine it's really great and it's a great investment so now I'm putting in about a tablespoon's worth of butter, which I sliced. I used the measuring guide on the stick of butter to cut the slices, and I'm putting it under the skin of the chicken by the breast area. I'm doing this to both chickens. You do not have to do this if you don't want to, okay? All right, you guys, so once you have the butter in the chicken and your seasoning and everything, you can go ahead and add the chickens onto the... Um, rotisserie attachment so on one side they clip in like you can release them to wash them and on the other side you just slide in the other cover basically that's what I'll call it the cover there's two sides to it so I'm going through the side of the breast and the thigh to make sure the chicken is nice and secure in the attachment so now I'm going to go ahead and slide on the other side or the cover. And then now you can pick it up and put it into the machine. There are two options that you can use to put the chicken either closer to the burners or farther away. I usually do them farther away. Um, and I set the timer to the amount of time that is needed for two chickens to cook. Just want to be clear the first time. This video is the first time that I use this. Um... I didn't read the manual to see how long it should take for the rotisserie to cook it. I usually just use my oven to do my chicken on a can and stuff like that. So I'm familiar with that. So with this, I had to add on a lot of minutes, um, actually an extra hour. So it took two hours for both chickens to cook fully to the perfect temperature, okay, to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, Definitely have a, a thermometer on standby because it will be helpful, a food thermometer that you could stick into the chicken breast, um, the breast part of the chicken when you stop the machine, just to make sure it's at 165 degrees Fahrenheit. That's when you know your chicken is fully cooked and it's done. As far as the noise, the noise is not loud. Um, the other version that I had picked out for my wedding registry, um, the first time I used it, it was fine, but then the second time it was super loud, like something was wrong. This one has a very um, low sound. It, it's not irritating. Like I could hear it, but it's not like making any clicking sounds or it just, you know makes you irritated just by listening to it so it has a very low sound so I like that about it I hope it stays this way um, I think if you add too much weight on it um, can really affect how much sound you get so if you put something on there that's way too heavy then you'll probably get a lot of sound okay um, so it took the chickens about two hours to cook um, adding on a minute here and there just to make sure it's fully cooked and checking the temperature to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. As you guys could see, the juices are dripping in the drip pan, which I do love that it comes with a drip pan. Usually when the chickens are done, and here you can see they're close to done, not all the way, close to done. Um, I like to take the drip pan out and reheat it or cook it again, add in some extra liquids and spices and things like that to add on to rice or mashed potatoes and vegetables or onto the chicken itself. It's really delicious. All right, you guys, so you can definitely get a nice show of your chickens or whatever it is that you're roasting, a duck or turkey, you know, from the big glass view, which I really like. I also like that it can easily be stored away. It has these legs that pop out, and then you can put them back into place to stand up the machine, and then you put them back into place to kind of fold it down, and it takes away a lot of the bulk of the machine, and you could store it away really easily. Uh, to take it apart to clean it is really easy as well. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I really like that as well. So my only issue was the turn dial temperature, option which it doesn't have but you do you can cook your meat by the amount of minutes or hours you put okay so it does have a set temperature in there there's also a no heat option and a sear option which will give you more color to your meat which i did use in this video just to see how it works so 
I don't know if you could tell, but the chicken skin is kind of bubbling a bit, so it adds extra heat onto it to give it more color. So if you're doing like a roast or a steak or something like that, or like kebabs, you might want to use the roast option for like shrimp kebabs because shrimp don't need that long to cook anyways. But um, it's totally up to you what you do with your machine. But I must say I really love the machine. I love the size of it, the style of it. Um, really wanted to turn dial but I'm not gonna complain it cooks some really good chicken the kids love it and they actually look forward to it so um, yeah I'm happy with it I'll give it about 4.95% of one star <laughs> 5% for the turn 5% for the turn dial that I really wanted but you know close to five stars for the machine okay so yeah, just wanted to show you guys my review and show you the recipe. This is how the chicken looks when it's done. It's delicious, it's juicy, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know, give me a thumbs up, comment down below, and don't forget to hit the notification so you don't miss any uploads when I do upload. Okay, and yeah, that's it. Love you guys. Bye.